Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we were looking at Azure's deployment models. And the first model we're going to talk about is public cloud. And that's where everything is built on the cloud service provider. You're not using anything on prem or in your own data centers. Everything is running within Azure. Uh, and generally, this is known as cloud native, um, but for some reason, Azure calls it public cloud. So that's what we're going to use in the terminology here. And so here I have an architectural diagram where we have a network. Uh, on Azure, and within that network, we have a virtual machine running and a database running. So that would be an example of public cloud. Then we have private cloud. And so this is where everything is built on the company's data centers, also known as on-premise, because it's within uh, the premises of the organization, uh, like their physical location. And uh, it could uh, an organization, organization could technically be operating their own cloud. Uh, but it would be private cloud, and they could be running some open source cloud software that mimics what um, Azure would do, such as OpenStack. So it looks very similar, uh, but you just uh, put an OpenStack in there, and it's running a virtual machine or a server, and it's also running a database. And the last on our list here is a hybrid. So with hybrid, uh, you are using both on-premise and the cloud service provider, and they're connected together. And so there's a lot of different networking services that you can use that will facilitate the connection between the two. Uh, in this case, we're using Express Route. Express Route is a dedicated uh, connection. It's like having a fiber optic line running from your on-premise data center to the Azure network. So it's just one of the ways you can connect. And if we wanted to understand like the pros and cons, I have this nice little uh, table here, and we'll just quickly go through it. So if you're using public uh, cloud, uh, it's more cost effective. Security, um, it, it's, uh, its security controls are stronger by default, but some people might not find the cloud will meet all their security requirements because of government and regulatory um, uh, regulatory reasons, not because the, the cloud is not secure, but it's just those, uh, those policies. Uh, for level of configuration, it's going to be limited based on what the cloud service provider exposes to you. Um, still, there's a lot of configuration there. It's just that if you if you have your own servers, uh, you obviously can do anything and everything with them. For technical knowledge, you don't need to have as much in-depth knowledge of the underlying infrastructure because you're not physically setting up servers uh, or that networking and everything else. Now, coming down to private cloud, private cloud is the most expensive option on our list. Um, so you're going to be paying uh, a lot of money there. Uh, for security, uh, there is no guarantee that it is 100% secure because you just don't have the same kind of visibility that you would have with a cloud service provider with all those dashboards. It's just so hard to build out all that software. But you could meet your security compliance requirements um, depending on your situation. Uh, but this is becoming uh, less and less as um, more governments and larger organizations move over to the cloud. Uh, you can configure infrastructure exactly how you like because you literally have uh, bought the hardware and do anything you want with it. Uh, and the technical knowledge, you'll have to have a, a, a serious amount of technical knowledge. You might even have a really hard time finding the resources to uh, to maintain all that stuff. Then uh, uh, down below, we have the hybrid model. So this could be more cost effective based on uh, what you offload to the cloud and also the cost of actually moving data back and forth. Uh, for security, uh, you know, you have more to secure. But uh, technically, uh, some things are easier to secure on the cloud than it is in uh, private. So maybe you have a boost in security. You're going to get the best of both worlds in terms of configuration. Uh, and for technical knowledge, you're going to need to know both the cloud and and uh, like how to set things up on premise. So that's the most work there. And just one more deployment model here. I just want to talk about cross cloud. This isn't something that is listed on the actual exam, but it's something that you should under understand and know. And so cross cloud is when you're using multiple cloud providers. Sometimes people refer to this as multi cloud or hybrid cloud. And so I just have an example here. So. Um, uh, there's a service called Azure Arc, and what Azure Arc does is it extends your control plane so you can run um, uh, containers, Kubernetes containers, on uh, different platforms. And so you could have AWS on the left-hand side with EKS and GCP Kubernetes Engine, and so you could be running virtual machines, and they're all treated like they're on the same network. So cross-cloud is becoming uh, uh, very popular with extremely large organizations where they, they have uh, very unique requirements, but I, I definitely want you to know what that is because it just gets left out uh, and it's definitely something that is uh, part of the industry. So there you go.